Now, if you have uh, a background in C++ or Java, you know that one of the most common uses of uh, methods in an object in a class is accessor methods, right? So you have getters and setters. Those are probably the most common methods you would write in a language like Java. So how would you have accessor methods in a language like JavaScript? Let's, uh, let's try that out. Let's say I have a var person equals, I'm gonna have the same uh, first name property, which is my first name, and uh, the last name property, which is my last name. Simple object. Now let's say I wanna create a method on this to get the full name, right? First name plus last name. Now I can just create a temporary method here, which is, uh, let's say get full name. It's gonna be a function, has to be. And uh, let's say I return a simple string for now called not implemented yet. Now, in order to access this, what I would do is I would say person dot get full name. And this is gonna return whatever the method, the, fu the function returns here, it happens to be a string. So I'm gonna have a var full name variable which holds on to that. And then I can do a console.log of full name and it should print not implemented yet because we haven't implemented that logic. Now let's add the logic in order to get the full name, okay? So what would that logic be? I would need to do a first name plus last name, right? That's what would get me the full name. So how would I do first name plus last name? I would do person dot first name plus, and have a space here so that this looks good and then I'm gonna do person dot last name. So what happens is this initializes the object with these parameters. And then when the person dot get full name is called, this function is gonna execute and it's gonna get person dot first name, person dot last name, add that up and return it. And ideally full name should have the full name with those two strings added up. Let's run this. Well, I do get the full name. So it looks to be good. Looks like it's working, but there is a risk involved in this code. This code is fragile. It's, there are things you can do to break this very easily. So can you guess what, uh, what's the drawback of doing something like this? The first question that I get from people when I explain to them about this piece of code is that they get confused about the order of initializing this stuff, okay? So when they look at this line, uh, the first question that com comes to their mind is, hey, I'm accessing person, but I'm doing this inside the initialization block of the person object. So is there a chance that the person uh, object isn't ready when this line gets executed? To that question, I would say the answer is no, it does not have that problem. This works perfectly fine. The reason why this works perfectly fine is this line, line number five, gets executed only after this line is executed. Line number nine is executed, okay? This initializes the function, but it doesn't actually execute it, okay? Line five gets executed only when person dot get full name is called. So there is no risk of you accessing a person object that is not fully prepared, right? You can access the person object while the person object is being constructed because all that this block does, the one that I'm highlighting here, all that it does is it takes a function and assigns it to a property. It doesn't care what's inside the function. What's inside the function matters only when the function is being called. So by the time the function is being called, the person object is fully initialized. So you don't run into the risk of using an object that's partially being initialized. That's not an issue. What I'm talking about is a different issue. The issue is 
that you are depending on the name of the variable inside the object. Now, this works fine. We have tested it. I'm executing this. It works perfectly fine. But now let's say further down the line, there's some other piece of code that does something like this person equals open close. Okay. Now I lose the object because that was what was assigned to person. I'm ass assigning a new object to it. So the object that I initialized from lines one to seven is now gone. But since it's objects, objects are essentially, you know, variables pointing to a location in memory. What if I held on to that object using some other variable? Now, let's say I have another variable here, var person two equals person. And now I have person initialized to an empty object. Now the object that I initialized before still exists, but the name of the variable that's pointing to that object is person two. So since these variables are just pointers, I should be able to do person two dot get full name. This should work, shouldn't it? Think about what happens when I do this. When I do a person two dot get full name, well, it's person two is pointing to this object. It's no longer assigned to person. It's assigned to person two now. So get full name is going to access this property of that object. It realizes the property is a function, so it's going to execute it. Now, what is the line that it executes? It executes return person dot first name plus space plus person dot last name. Now it's going to find what person dot first name is. What is person dot first name here? Person is an empty object, so person dot first name is undefined. It's going to add space to it. Person dot last name is undefined, so the output that you're going to get back is undefined space undefined. Let's try that out. I'm going to have console.log person two dot get full full name and uh, let me remove this console.log if I were to run this you see you get undefined undefined what it should have written return was still Kashik Kotagal right because that's the first name and that's the last name but the thing is get full name function is hard coded to point to the person variable so for get full name to work, there has to be a variable called person pointing to that object. If person points to a different object, nothing works, right? The, the function breaks. So that's the reason why I said this is fragile code, right? It cannot have the person variable change. So in order to make this less fragile, in order for this code to work, even though you are, uh, you know, you are okay with the person variable being changed, you should stop depending on the person variable, right? You cannot hard code the name person here because that's what could potentially change and cause this to break. What you need to do instead is to be able to say, I don't want to get the person variable's first name because that could potentially change. I just want the first name of the object that I am a part of, right? Whatever the object the get full name is a part of that object's first name, right? So that's what you need to do here, okay? I want the self object's first name, and here I want the self object's last name. In order to ha refer to the self, the object of which the function is a part of, there is a special keyword, and that keyword is called this. So this is the keyword which is used in a lot of different languages like C, and C++ and Java, uh, JavaScript has some similar ways of using this, but there are places where it changes drastically. But in this case, I think it's more or less the same. Instead of saying person dot first name, I say this dot first name, and then this dot last name. So I don't explicitly depend on a specific variable. I say depend on whatever uh, the instance that I'm a part of. Now, if I were to print this, it still works because I don't care what person is pointing to. I'm not using that in this function. It could point to anything else. I'm always referring to myself. So this, uh, this keyword is an important concept in the case of JavaScript, especially when you're working with functions.